All right, welcome to an introductory video of Crocodile 3D. In this video, we'll be going over the interface and all the, all the different parts of it, how to navigate it and control different things. Basically understand how the program works so that you can begin creating 3D models in it. So, by the end of this video, you'll have a, a good understanding on how to use it, how to operate it, and how to um, start making models. Okay, so you can see the 3D viewport on the left side here. This is where all the 3D tiles will be placed into the scene so that you can construct various 3D models and environments. On the right side, you have this side panel, which contains various tabs. And within each tab is um, other um, windows that allow you to, and controls that allow you to do different things and control um, other aspects of your scene, such as the tile sets that it uses, uh, UVs for different tiles, um, the painting uh, tools that you can use to draw on your tiles or onto your tile set. The transform tab contains various uh, actions or operations to uh, translate, resize, scale things, rotate, um, crosshair camera, and also extrusion stuff. There's also the scene tab, which will contain your objects, which are basically tiles that you've grouped together, and also the instances that you've placed into the scene. And there's some other options as well. Um, we'll put it back onto the default tile set tab for now. And this basically is where you'll be choosing your tiles that you can place into the scene. One, one option you have here, if you click this button, you can undock the panels so that it becomes its own window. Um, all the tabs here remain uh, in one window though, so you can't separate those, but this is an option. If you want to dock it again, you just click the dock button and it goes back here. If you want to switch it to the other side, you click this button. If you look back into the 3D viewport here, you'll notice at the top we have some buttons and also on the left side there's some more buttons. Um, when you start the program you'll be in draw mode, um, which is the mode that you want to be in if you want to draw tiles to the scene. And the other mode is edit mode and you can switch between them by clicking this button here or by pressing the tab key. So you click this and you'll see it changes into this kind of uh, grid pattern and that, that signifies that you're in edit mode and that allows you to edit the vertices and position tiles, rotate them, change their shape basically and do other stuff to them. And I also have the keys shown up here at the top so that you could get an understanding of what keys I'm pressing. So as I press the tab key, the tab key gets highlighted. So you could take a look at that while I'm doing stuff so that you can understand how I control um, things and operate the program via the keyboard. So let's go back into draw mode. And as you can see, while you're in draw mode, these other buttons appear on the left side and these are different tools that you could use to draw tiles into the scene. The first one is just the basic tile tool. The next one is the sticky tool and the third one is the block tool. This fourth one is related to vertex color and it allows you to color your tiles um, or the vertices which kind of add color to your tile. So one thing we should talk about is how to 
maneuver the 3D viewport and the camera and how to um, look around in the 3D space. And basically, to do this, you hold down the space bar key and then left click to rotate. Or you hold down space bar key, right click to pan, or while holding down the space bar key, you could click down the middle mouse button to zoom in and down, or you could just use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Now, some people may be using other programs that have other other 3D programs that have other controls to navigate the 3D view. And if you're more comfortable with those controls, you could go up into the buttons panel, which is within the edit um, menu. And you could open this panel and choose a key group and go to camera. And inside here, you could choose how you want to rotate the scene, how you want to zoom it, how you want to pan it. So if we select, for instance, the panning of the scene, we can rebind the key to another key by just clicking in the input box and pressing the button that you want to use. In this case, I'll uh, use control, I guess. So if I hold control down and then use the right mouse button, it'll pan. Now you could choose the type of uh, control it has, whether it uses the key and the mouse or just the mouse only. So if you didn't want to use a key, you could just choose mouse only and then choose a mouse button. In this case, we want key and mouse. And here you could choose which mouse key you want to use. I'll just keep it the same so that when I go back into this mode, I could hold control and then right click and it'll pan the scene so I don't have to use spacebar anymore. So that allows you to kind of customize your controls a bit. And there's other thing you can basically customize all the actions and operations in the program to have your own key binding and things like that. And also you could kind of pin different actions to the top. So let's say select all objects. I want to pin this. Now you could see this button appear at the top. And if I want to select all objects, I could just click this button if I want instead of using the keyboard. So that's an option. So I'm just going to reset my pins because uh, I don't want to use them and reset my bindings. So now with that, you have a basic uh, understanding of how to maneuver the, maneuver the scene and look around. And if you're new to this, you may want to just practice this uh, you know, moving the camera around so they get, so that you get uh, familiar with it and it becomes a more um, just second nature, basically. So another thing you could do is hold spacebar and press Y to move forward and H to move back, and G left, and J right. So that's one way you could kind of move around like that. You'll notice as you rotate the camera, this little crocodile character in the lower left will rotate and show you the orientation of the scene. So that can give you an understanding of how things are orientated. You could also click on the crocodile and rotate it or pan it or um, zoom in. If you want to hide it, you could double click this circle 
And to reveal it, you just double click it again. You can move it around to another location if you want. Now, you'll notice in the 3D scene, there's this, these white lines, and this is your 3D crosshair. You can move it using the WASD keys, and these will move relative to the camera orientation. So if I press D, it'll move right. If I rotate the camera this way and press D, it'll move right relative to the camera. If I press A, it'll move left. If I rotate this other way, it'll move left relative to the camera. W moves it up, S moves it down. If I look down and press S, it moves this way. Press W, it moves that way. So it's up relative to the orientation of the camera. So if I rotate it this way and press the up key, it'll, or W for up, it'll move that way. So you quickly just move around, move this way, move this way, you know, and have control over the crosshair and position it exactly where you want it. So it's really quick and easy. And for if you're new to the program, it might take a little bit of time just to get used to the the controls, but once you get the hang of it, it's you don't really think about it, just you just do it. And basically, moving the 3D crosshair is important because when you're in draw mode, the tiles that you place are aligned to where the 3D crosshair is. As you can see here, if I'm facing this direction, it's aligned to the plane that goes through the 3D crosshair. If I rotate it, the camera this way, it gets aligned to the other plane that goes through the 3D crosshair. And again, if I look downwards, it gets aligned this way. So you use the 3D crosshair to kind of control where you're going to place tiles. So I could place some here, and then move the 3D crosshair up here, rotate, position them like that, position it like that. And as you, you notice, I could, I could uh, push the crosshair forward and backward while holding the spacebar key and pressing W and S. If I don't hold the spacebar key down, it goes up and down. So push it and pull it, holding spacebar. So that gives you control as to where you want to place things. Now if you don't want to do that, there's this sticky tool over here that we saw mentioned earlier, and you can just click the sticky tool. And what the sticky tool does is it automatically aligns the tile to whatever edge you kind of hover over or hover near. So if I hover over here, let's choose a different tile. I can place it like this and it automatically aligns to the tile. Obviously if there's other tiles in the background it's kind of tricky. It might uh, choose a different tile that you want, but uh, it might help in some cases. Like for example, this tree right here, if I want to extend it upwards, I could just, you know, do that and it continues going up. Or from this side, like that. As you can see, I don't have to position the uh, tile brush or the 3D crosshair to it. I could just extend it by using the sticky tool. I'll just undo all this by holding control and pressing D Z. And also, there is the block tool. I might as well mention that 
while we're at it. What the block tool does, it allows you to create 3D blocks. This and they basically extend from other blocks that you place. That and if you right click, you can erase the blocks. That's something I forgot to mention with the tile tool and sticky tool. Press the right key to erase. So let's and also with the block tool, it extends from other things in the scene, so you don't have to um You don't have to align the crosshair to it. It just automatically creates it relative to other tiles in the scene. But let's go back to the normal tile. And let's say I draw some tiles here. I could erase those tiles by holding the right mouse button and drawing over them. Okay? But uh, one thing you should keep in uh, mind is that the tile is drawn relative to the 3D crosshair. So you could see it aligns itself with the 3D crosshair. So if I move it slightly, it all automatically um, realigns, as you can see. So if I try to erase these, I can't because it's not aligned to them the vertices have to overlap and it has to be on the same plane so that I could erase them. That's just a question that some users that ask when they don't when they don't know how to erase stuff basically. So the vertices have to kind of overlap. So like if I right click on these tiles right here that are already in the scene, I'm not erasing them. And that's because the 3D crosshair and the tile brush isn't aligned to the existing tiles in the scene. So like if I wanted to erase these water tiles, I'd have to um, position the 3D crosshair so that they align so the tile brush overlaps basically. So now I could erase these tiles. But if you don't want to move the 3D crosshair, you could go into edit mode so that the vertices show up and then you can click on the vertice and it'll move the 3D crosshair to that location. And then you could just press Control uh, D to deselect. You can go back into draw mode and then you could erase them that way. So that's a quick way of aligning the 3D crosshair to existing tiles. You just go into edit mode, click a vertice that belongs to one of the tiles deselect it and now you're basically aligned or you could also there's another way that I just remembered you could press alt C so you don't even have to be in edit mode you could just be in draw mode and you could press alt C and it'll align the 3d crosshair to the tile that you're overlapping to the nearest vertice on that tile that's when you press alt and C You can do that to basically move things around. Another thing you could do is hold space bar and press C and that'll move the crosshair along the invisible plane that faces the camera. So if I want to move it along this cross this uh, axis, you can do it that way or this way. So there's different ways of controlling the 3D crosshair. And if you if you go into the documentation, you can find more information about all the different commands and shortcut keys and things like that. So if I open it here, you can see you have all the different commands and buttons that you can use, camera controls and crosshair controls. things like that. Okay, so let's say we've placed some tiles now and we want to edit those tiles. 
we can go into edit mode by clicking that or pressing the tab key and now you could see all the vertices up here and while in edit mode you can click the vertices to select them select multiple vertices and when it's selected you'll notice this gizmo show up and it allows you to click and drag the gizmo and move things around like that and you can undo that and deselect you don't have to use the gizmo you could click the stuff that you want to select and then use the WASD keys and move basically the 3D crosshair around and your selection will move with the 3D crosshair so that's an easy way to edit and move things around if you click the tile you could select the whole tile and move the whole tile like that you can click and drag to select multiple vertices you could hold shift and click and drag to select the faces and shift alt to deselect the faces and alt to deselect the vertices control T to deselect now if you have vertices and faces selected if you press control D it deselects the vertices first and then you have to press D uh, you have to press control D to deselect the faces afterwards same thing with selecting all if you press control A it selects all the faces and then control A again selects all the vertices you can you can select faces and then press control A to select the vertices so then if we move them it doesn't move anything else but you could press control A again while the vertices are selected and it selects any overlapping vertices that allows you to select things that are connecting to the selected tiles okay so You can also use the gizmo to do the same operations. And you can control whether the gizmo is shown or not by clicking that button up there or pressing the X key. So that toggles it on and off in case it gets in the way. And also you could change the um, transform mode of the gizmo by pressing um, this key right now it's in the move mode press it it goes into rotate and it will change the show um, rotation indicators that you can click on press it again and it turns into scaling so you could scale the tiles or you could press shift X to toggle those so say we go to rotate now we can rotate it one of want to scale it scale it undo that deselect one thing I should mention is the grid rounding value down here in the tile set panel you could set this to a different grid rounding value to control how many pixels the 3d crosshair moves so right now moves eight pixels at a time when you press the WASD keys if I want to move it at less pixels I could change it to 4 for instance and now when I press WSD keys it moves 4 pixels if 
I do one. It'll move one pixel, as you can see here. That gives you a little bit more control over how you move and position things. So I could select this vertice right here of these tiles and get some more fine finer control on the position of that vertice. I could use the mouse wheel to increment and dec decrement it that or I could use the bracket keys to increment and de decrement it below that input is the rotate interval value and this allows you to control how um, many degrees your selection will rotate relative to the 3D gizmo. So right now it's set to 15 by default. So when I rotate it this way, it rotates it 15 degrees at a time, kind of snaps to the degrees. If I want to change it to say 45, do that, and now it rotates. 45 degrees at a time. And you could click the different axes you want to rotate it around. So if I click this green circle, it rotates around the Y axis. The blue one would rotate it around the Z and the red would rotate it around the X. Now there's also keys that you could use to rotate 45 or actually 90 degrees. So let's say I select these tiles here. I could position the crosshair there and press Q or E to rotate the selection 90 degrees relative to the 3D crosshair. So E rotates it that way and Q rotates it the other way. And if I hold shift and press Q and E it'll rotate around the other axis and that's relative to the camera so if I orientate the camera this way and press Q and E it rotates them like that hold shift it rotates them like that that's just a quick way to rotate things 90 degrees if you want without using the gizmo. If you want to reposition the gizmo, you can press Alt X and based on where the mouse hovers, it will choose the nearest vertice. And if you aren't hovering, actually if you are hovering something and you just press Alt X again, it'll position it to the 3D crosshair. So it's one way to control where the gizmo is located. So that's a little bit of information on how to manipulate the geometry of the tiles and things like that. Another thing worth mentioning 
is if you place a tile and then go into edit mode, you could click and drag the vertices with the mouse, with the left mouse button. And that might be a quick way to um, edit things. And if you hold shift after clicking, so you click and drag with the left mouse button, and then you hold shift and hover over other vertices, you could snap the vertice that you're dragging onto the other vertice, like that. You can drag, hold shift, hover over that, and now you've basically connected this tile to this other tile. It's really quick and easy to, you know, connect tiles together. If you wanted to close a gap or a space and extend tiles like that. So I can draw that into the scene, click, drag, snap it to the other tiles. And it's basically a quick way of, you know, building up your geometry in different ways. And you could also control the diagonal of a tile by pressing Shift uh, F. That'll flip that diagonal of any selected faces. So you have to select the face and then uh, press Shift F, and it'll flip that diagonal. If I have multiple selected, flip them both. So that kind of helps helps you control how you want to shape things. You can build up things fast that way. Now once you've placed tiles in the scene, you might want to um, change the tile that it's using or the texture of the tile set. So instead of rebuilding it, you could uh, just click a different tile. Let's say we want to um, use this tile instead of this green tile. If we go into draw mode, we can hold alt and left click on it and it'll apply that tile to the existing tile. It'll apply the UVs of the tile brush to the UVs. It'll over it will it'll take the UVs of the tile brush and apply them to the existing tile in the scene. So you can do it to multiple tiles. You can just draw over them if you want. It's a quick way of changing uh, which um, portion of the tile set the tiles use in the tile scene. I'm gonna undo that. One thing you could do is hold Alt and right click and that'll basically eye drop existing tiles in the scene and apply it to your tile brush. So you could eye drop that and then apply it to other tiles like that if you wanted to kind of easily paint over existing tiles and edit stuff. Another thing that's worth mentioning while you're in draw mode is you can rotate your tile brush by pressing Q and E. And you could also flip and mirror by pressing F and R. So I could apply this tile right there. Maybe I don't want it orientated that way. I could rotate it and then apply it and it changes the orientation like that. Okay, so let's look a bit more at the tile set panel. This is where you 
will pick tiles from your tile set and also set other settings. By default, this default tile set is uh, used in every scene that you create, but you could add your own tile sets or create blank tile sets. And when you add a tile set, you just choose which image you want to import and it'll add it to your scene. If you want to create a blank tile set, you can do that as well and define how many tiles wide and high it is or in pixels if you want and which color you want to use across the image. It could be opaque or it could be transparent. And you can just create it and it creates a new tile set. And you could select your tile sets here or by clicking these buttons to cycle through them or by pressing control and the bracket keys. That's another way of cycling and selecting the tile set. You could also select specific tiles from other tile sets and create a new tile set from them. If you wanted to, um, well, there's some uses for that that we may go into in the future. Like if you want to create repeating tiles or tiles that have a repeating texture, that would be useful. You could replace a tile set, remove a tile set, combine tile sets together. If you have like a duplicate tile set. Um, you could apply different tile sets to selected tiles. So I could select these and go to this tile and then apply tile set to the tiles. And it basically just changes which tile set it uses. I don't have any um, drawing on this one, so it just looks blank when I do that. You could resize the tile set if you want. And you could also export it. When you resize the tile set, you could choose how to resize it, like from the top left. If you want to resize the canvas or the whole image. The canvas won't stretch the image, so it kind of extends when you size it. It just extends the canvas. Whereas if you resize the image, it'll stretch the tile set to the new image. You could change the different um, units if you want to resize it in pixels or percentage or tiles. You can do it that way. And if it creates new space via the canvas, you can choose a color that it uses for that part of the canvas. And then you just hit apply to resize it. Now you can select multiple tiles and then your tile brush will expand and you could draw the whole selection or the whole area into the scene as one tile. You can change the tile set size, I mean yeah the tile size. So say I want 8x8 eight eight pixels, you can do that and now the part that I select is 8 by 8 pixels and you can also select a larger area if you want. And if you click this button here, it uses a unique value. So if it's unselected, you're, you're editing the global tile size, which is a the tile size all tile sets use. So let's set it to 16 by default. We click unique and then we could set just this tile set to use a tile size of 8 by 8. So if we go into the other tile set, it's still set to 16 by 16 when we select them. And then when we go back to this one, it selects them at 8 by 8 pixels. So you could have different tile sizes for different tile sets so that you don't have to keep 
setting these values. I'll just use the global tile size for now. And you can set the UV padding, which uh, creates a padding when you select the tile. Let's say we put two here and two there. It goes left, right, top, and bottom padding. So this will create a left and right padding like that. Basically uh, trims it, I guess. So two, two, that would put padding of two around it like that. So if you wanted space around all your tiles, you could, you could uh, set the tile size, in this case 20 by 20, with padding of two around each one, so that when you select an area, each, you'd be selecting 16 by 16 pixels with a padding of two pixels around it. And you'd have to adjust your tile set size to accommodate the padding and things like that. I don't know. It's a little bit more of a advanced feature. So if you understand how UVs work, it'll make more sense to you. But we'll go in that um, a little later. I'll just set these to zero, zero, zero. Change the 3D tile size. Basically just kind of scales your tile brush. That, and also if you rotate the tile brush, it will rotate it, flip it, and things like that. And down here is a tile splitting value. I might as well mention that just really quickly. If you go into edit mode and select tile, you can hit middle mouse key. It goes into active select mode. And while you're in this mode, you see a yellow line. And you can basically right click and go faces split and it'll split the tile into two tiles. Or you could just press Alt S to split it. So that's one way of um, editing the geometry, creating more vertices and tiles and things like that. And then to get out of active edit mode, you just hit middle mouse key again. Or you could press shift enter to enter and exit that mode. So after doing that, you have more vertices to kind of edit the shape and things like that. And basically this input down here allows you to control the precision of that line that that where you can split. So right now I set it to one, so every one pixel is where the line will align itself. Set it back to four, every four pixels. Just a bit of, just a, a way to control where you split it, if you want to split it. So there's these other buttons up here above the tile set. And by the way, if you want to pan this tile set, you hold space bar and just left click and drag. And to zoom, you could use the mouse wheel or you could use this up here. Or you could hold down middle mouse button and pan it that way. Now these buttons up above the tile set control different uh, attributes of your material or the tile set. 
First one is the wrapping mode. Clamp to edge. Repeat. Mirror to repeat. You have those options. And those are useful if you want to do like repeating textures on a tile. So let's say I want I want to put this tile into a new tile set. So I go here and select tiles to a new tile set. So this is its own tile, and in this case, I could place the tile here, and then, oops, I could make it bigger. That. I could change the wrapping mode to repeat. And then in the UVs, I, when I move the UVs outside of the area, it'll repeat the tile set. So if I do something like that, now it repeats. If, it's, if I put it on repeat mirrored, it repeats it, but like in a mirrored way, as you can see. And clamp would just clamp it, which causes it to kind of stretch the pixels outside of the edge. That's why you want it on repeat if you're going to do that. And basically, this is how you edit the UVs. The UV panel. We'll go into more of that later. I just wanted to show you how the wrapping mode works. There's also, you could choose between single or double sided mode. So the tile set, when you look from behind, you don't see anything. It just, it just renders the tiles from one side. So if you do double sided mode, you have to choose the tile set that you want it to toggle on. So if we go back to the default tile set and we click this button, it will draw both sides. It'll render both sides of the tiles. It doesn't render this other one that we just made because it uses a different tile set. So if I want to view this one from the back, I have to select it first and then click it. So now I can see the back of it. It will also allow you to select tiles from the back when you're using double sided mode. Otherwise, you can't select it from the back. But uh, if you're exporting stuff, you may have to change that in the program that you import it into so that it's also double sided. And even though it's double sided it'll still have a front and a front to it and generally speaking you want to kind of keep it consistent as to like tiles that neighbor other tiles they should be neighboring they should be orientated in the same direction basically for example say I have this on double sided mode okay and I draw this one here and then I look this way and I'm drawing these up here and there and then maybe later on I'm orientated this way and I draw some over here now you've got tiles that are facing different ways but you can't really tell which way they're facing right so when you go in to export it and import it into another program it might not be double sided or the way it's orientated might affect other things like how the lighting works and stuff like that so if I turn it off all of a sudden it looks like this and you might be confused 
That's because you've placed them facing different directions. So, generally speaking, I leave it on just the front side, single-sided mode, just so that I don't, you know, get confused and face things in different directions. This other button here is decal mode, and then there's a transparency button. Decal mode basically is useful if you're using kind of like repeated textures across the tile, like this right here. If you wanted to place something over it, and you could say maybe select this. Maybe you wanted to place it on top of it. So let's say I place it. If you look closely, it's kind of not appearing. It's like um, flickering, basically. Can you see that? Maybe I'll use a bigger tile. So if I draw all these tiles over it, it's kind of like Z fighting. That's what the term is, Z fighting. It can't determine which one's in front of the other because they're located in, in the same position in space. So it kind of uh, is confused as to which one to draw. So that's why there's a deca decal mode. If we click decal mode and turn it on, now those tiles will appear in front of the other one. It's still, sometimes when you look at it at a specific angle, it, but uh, most of the time it, it works. And this applies to the whole tile set. So you'd want to place your decals on their own tile set that has decal mode on. So I'll turn this off and then I will say I want only these tiles to be decal, decal tiles. I will add these selected tiles to a new tile set and or I'll just import my tile set that I have decals drawn to or whatever and then I'll just toggle it on for this tile set okay and then I'll select these and I'll draw over the other ones. Actually, the other ones are still there because they're not decals. Well, I only erase decals if I'm using decals. So, I could just select these in edit mode and then press delete key and then I'll go back to draw mode and draw these that's good you can't draw decals over other decals because then it'll just have more Z, Z fighting like if you use two, de two decal tile sets I would just use one decal set tile set and so I drew those decals. I could go back to um, another tile set that isn't a decal. Maybe they draw this and it'll draw them underneath. So that's basically a way of using decals. And then when you export, there is a. Where is it? decal offset right here and it will offset the decals by a certain amount so maybe you a good amount might be 001 or 001 like a percentage or a a fraction small fraction might be good and it'll slightly position them outwards so that they aren't aligned to the other 
tiles that aren't decals because what it does when I turn decal mode on it just renders it slightly forward towards the camera it doesn't change the geometry the positions of their vertices it's just how it gets rendered so that might be something you control when you import it into another program it's up to you how you want to operate that so you can just export it with a zero and then control it yourself or just uh, just uh, what's the word embed it into the geometry so the next thing is transparency that's useful if you use um, translucent pixels in, in your tile set so if the pixels are like totally transparent you don't need transparency and again I would use a separate tile set for this sort of thing so let's use this tile set for example I select this portion and I go into the painting mode um, maybe I could erase this part that's fully opaque or fully transparent I could change the alpha transparency here and then draw let's choose a different color maybe this color so like there's different levels of transparency here if I go back into the tile set and select this right now when I draw it to the scene you can't see through it because it doesn't it's the material doesn't have um, it's not using a transparency mode so if I click this and turn transparency on then you'll be able to see through it transparency is a difficult thing to manage it's more of like an advanced type of thing so I'd only use it if you know like what you're doing but it's there if you need it and again I'd I'd put all the translucent stuff onto their own tile set and then turn on this transparent mode for that tile set. So here we have the refresh tile set button and this is useful if you're importing a tile set and editing it in another program after you've edited it you could hit the refresh tile sets and it will update it with any changes that you've made to those tile sets and also in the settings there's something there's a setting so that it auto auto refreshes the tile sets you can do that too um one thing you want to keep in mind when you do that though is if you you don't want to edit it in the painting tab otherwise if you edit in the painting tab and then you edit into the program it won't have the changes that you've made so you might overwrite your changes you make in Crocodile and that's also true like if you edit the size of the tile set in another program Crocodile won't know that it, the tile size has changed and so it might change the um, the UVs when you refresh it so normally you'd want to resize the tile set first in Crocodile just so that it can readjust the UVs of the tiles and then resize it outside it in the other program to match so I just mentioned that because some users resize the tile set outside of Crocodile and then when they import it or they replace the tile set with a new tile set that has different dimensions 
then their UVs get stretched um, on the tiles and they don't know how to fix that. So basically what I'm saying is resize tile sets first in crock tile to prevent the UVs from getting stretched out because when you resize it in crock tile it will readjust the UVs like for instance if we all these tiles use all these tiles have their own UVs um, mapped to the tile set as you can see here I selected some and they're all located right here and then let's say I resize the tile set um, maybe I just add a few of that canvas apply it makes the canvas larger but everything looks good still and then when I go into the UVs you can see the UVs are still located where they are where they are and that's just because UVs are stored with values of 0 to 1 and 0 being either the left or bottom of the tile set and 1 being the other side and so basically things can get messed up if you resize it outside the program so I'll just undo that and yeah so that kind of leads us into actually before I go into the UV panel let's talk a bit about this other section of the tile set panel which is um, tile palettes and down here you could add your own palette let's add a new one and then we can click it to select the palette and then we can select some tiles and then you can right click add tiles we could right click them up here and go tile palette add tiles to select a tile palette remove them edit their weights and basically what the tile palette does is it allows you to place tiles randomly or allows you to it allows the tiles that you place into the scene to be picked randomly from the tile palette so if I place them if I draw it's picking them randomly from that tile palette so that this gives you a bit of a way to randomize the tiles um, that you're placing into the scene that might be useful and also if you edit the weights you could select the tile here and edit weights and maybe give it a higher weight and now that tile will be chosen more often so let's create a space over here on the right side you could see that that tile has been chosen a lot more often than the other tiles and you could select a different one edit weights maybe that one could have three and you could see how it's distributed in that tile set by how much space that tile takes up so the more space it has in the tile set, the tile palette, um, the more likely it'll get chosen when you place when you're placing tiles to the scene. And you could add more tile palettes. You can also expand this a bit. Choose different tiles. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Undo back tile palette. Add them to there. And then choose something to get the size back. And now placing random tiles. And you could remove the tiles. You could say you want to remove that one. You could remove tiles and remove that from the tile palette. So you have a little control over that. You could also reposition it, reorder tile palettes you could also hide it if you don't want it to get in the way and clear it, reset the weights and things like that and also these buttons above here 
allow you to randomize the mirroring, flipping, and rotating. So let's say we select this um, tile palette. We could randomize rotations so when you place it, it will also choose a random rotation of it of that tile. So now they're not all orientated the same way. They have different orientations, basically. Turn it off. You could combine different all of them if you want. And also there is this other button, which is the palette mode. It could be random or it could be sequenced. And when you're in sequence mode, it just does them in order from left to right. So if I choose this one and draw them, it just draws them in sequence. So I could just click, 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 click. Maybe one over there, that. Maybe over here. So you kind of use that to kind of um, draw them in certain sequences. Well, the same sequence. That gives you a little bit more control of choosing tiles from the tile set. Okay, so I'll just clear this out by reloading the scene. And let's go to the next uh, panel, which is the UVs panel. And basically, we kind of showed a bit of this already. But this is where the UVs of the tiles get displayed. So if I select some tiles, let's say I select these... Um, leaf tiles, plant tiles. You could see they get selected, or the UVs uh, appear in the UV panel. And when I hover over each one, the vertices over here get highlighted. And when I ho hover over the tiles in the 3D view, their UVs get highlighted so you can tell which one they belong to, which UVs the tile belongs to and vice versa. Okay, so I could edit these UVs to change um, change how the tile set gets displayed on the tiles. So right now if I select these and move it, I could change what gets displayed here on the 3D tile. Let's see. As I move that, maybe I want this over here. And also you could select the UV coordinates by clicking and dragging. And then clicking on them and moving them. And double clicking outside on nothing to deselect them. So do that. I changed what got displayed on that tile. And I could also undo it. So you could also change the UV precision. So right now it's set at four and four for the X and Y. So when I move it, it moves four pixels in the X and Y. And yeah, pretty simple. I can set it to be one and one, and it'll move it every one pixel, as you can see. And you can do fractions, so 0 0.01 if you really wanted to, <laughs> you can do that. I'll just get four. And you could hold control, I think, or maybe shift. Yeah, shift when you're dragging, and that'll just 
snap it to one uh, with a position of one pixel when you hold shift. Just a quick way to get things more precise while you're editing. Um, you can scale the UVs, so when you select some, let's say I undo that, and I select, say I select multiple. I do control A to select all of them. Maybe I move them a bit, and then change the scale so it's double the width. It'll scale it relative to this crosshair right here. So it's centered on everything right now. When I hit apply, it'll apply the new scale. So it basically like multiplies it. So I do like 0 0.5 to scale it uh, down. That basically. So if I undo it, I can reposition it. And you can hold shift to snap the crosshair to another coordinate. Now when I hit apply, it'll scale it relative to wherever the crosshair is. And you get a different effect. So that might be useful, repositioning this crosshair. And you you'll want to reposition it when you're rotating UVs this has a you can set how much it rotates right here 10 degrees at a time and then when you hit when you hold control you can see the coordinates become circular and that shows you you're in rotation mode now when you click and drag it'll rotate everything relative to the crosshair the UV crosshair So maybe I deselect that and I just want to rotate these. When I select those, the, the crosshair gets repositioned to centered, centered between everything that you select. Maybe I want to rotate it relative to this position. And I hold shift and rotate it. That. That's just a way to kind of edit things, edit the UVs. Um, So you could, let's say, let's undo all that. Let's say I have a tile, <clears throat> a couple tiles that I have, and I want to draw them. Let's say I draw them here. And then I edit them this way, and I connect them together in different ways. So now everything's kind of stretched out. And I don't want it to look stretched. I want the pixels to be square. I could select these tiles so that their UVs show up. I could select everything. And then I could right click and it gives you a lot of options here that and ways that you could transform them. You could mirror them, flip them, rotate them left and right, 90 degrees, and align them to the crosshair and stuff like that. You round their positions to the nearest pixel stuff like that. Same up here, these buttons do same thing, mirror flip, rotate. And this other uh, button here, it selects single coordinates or multiple coordinates at a time. So if I have nothing selected and I just select, uh, click and drag one, it just drags one of them. But if I um, click this, toggle multiple, then it selects everything when I click on them. Click and drag. 
that. Same thing with uh, just the coordinate right here. I can move all of them because right now they're they're kind of overlapping. Turn that off. It just click and drags one. So that might be useful. But let's say uh, I want to flatten them to make their pixels more square. I can go transform flatten, or I can press the N key, and that makes everything not stretched anymore. So as you can see, all the pixels are square. But now all these um, UVs are kind of unaligned and maybe you want them connected together like this one is next to this one. So this should be like connected to this side and this one should be connected over here somehow like that. You can do that. So one way is, let's see here. I think I had the UVs mirrored. I'll just rotate them. But let's say I want to connect these two together. I could select this and click the vert, the UV coordinate of the tile and then hold shift and then drag over another UV coordinate of another tile and it'll snap it. So this is while I hold shift while I'm dragging. Now that those corners are connected then I could take this crosshair and snap it to the corner by holding shift. And then I could rotate from over here, hold shift, rotate. Now when I release it, it doesn't snap to the 10 degrees that I have set down here. When I hold shift, it does snap. And when I hold shift and go hover over another UV coordinate, it snaps to that UV coordinate. So I could do that, and all of a sudden, now we have these two tiles connected. And as you can see in the 3D view, the pixels just flow together across both tiles because the UVs are connected. And it's mapped. Um, seamlessly so now yeah and we can do the same for the other um, UVs so this one oops you select first and also if you need more space to work you can move this out like so change the space of the sidebar <laughs> probably should have mentioned that earlier So let's say I take this one and rotate it. I could zoom in, snap this one, this corner to that corner, snap the crosshair, and rotate it, snap it there. So now they're connected. And then I could take the last one and snap, oops. Select all, snap, and then snap that, snap that. So as you can see, because the geometry isn't completely flat, the UV coordinates, um, this side right here, these two edges can't connect that well because well it's it's like flattening trying to flat flatten something that isn't flat and 
you get these spaces in the UV panel. So you can kind of just, if you really wanted to connect them, you could just manually move things around and you know, readjust things a little bit. And it's close enough. So now you have stuff basically connected and seamless between all the tiles, the UVs. And then you can kind of select everything and just rotate them however you want. And that's, uh, that's how you edit the UVs basically. So let's see what other opera operations are. There's other things you can do when you right click here. You can select the tile you want. Maybe you want to reassign these UVs to a tile. So right click this tile and then go to go to um, transform and then set to tile. And it'll reset the UVs to this tile. Or maybe I want them this tile. And it gets reset. Or you could set it to the whole tile set. Like that. There might be some instances where you want to do that. Or you could paint on the tile set, the UVs. Let's say I select all these UVs and I want to paint on them. I could paint. I could trace them, I could fill them, fill checkered, so let's say I, I trace them. It draws the UVs basically into the texture and it uses whatever color you're currently using. Or you can do a fill, fill solid. You have to remember to select everything that you want to fill. And fill checkered. So that might be a good way to um, draw or texture your tiles based on UVs that you've mapped. Also while you're painting, say select this selection, while you're painting you can turn on the UVs. So you could see the UVs that you have selected uh, while you're editing your tile set while while you're painting over it. So that's also useful. We'll go stuff. Now later. another thing you could do without going to the UV panel is you Which can that might be the next thing basically that we'll talk about. Um draw the some other useful things like tile uh, into the scene deselecting like that. And then you could Tiles select some vertices that are selected. and then using Basically. the arrow keys you can adjust the UVs of those vertices. And it'll move it relative to the UV position or selecting values. Tiles so if I set things. these to... Actually, you could also hold shift or maybe it's control. Yeah, control and use the arrow keys to move things one pixel at a time. And just the arrow keys to move the precision values. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. And also while you're in the UV panel, you could also do the same thing. So I select those and I can move those relative and hold control to move them one pixel at a time. That's one way of doing it without uh, clicking and dragging. But next up, we will talk a bit about the painting panel. 
So if we select a portion of the tile set, maybe we just want to select the whole tile set. And then go into the tile the painting panel. We're presented with this area where you actually do the drawing. And you can choose the tool that you want to use. You have the pencil tool, the eraser tool, eyedropper, paint bucket, the marquee tool, lasso, magic wand, the hand tool, and the arrow tool. So the pencil tool allows you to draw on the tile set. And when it's selected, you can change the brush size and yeah, you can also use the bracket keys to make it larger or smaller. And you could change the dither amount as well. So if I change it bigger, and use different dithering, you could do that if you want. That's more of a special case and it may not be what you want so there's also vertical symmetry toggle on and draw symmetrically there's also a horizontal is that yeah horizontal symmetry you can toggle those on depending on whether you want to do some symmetrical designs like maybe a face you could draw like Face. <laughs> Something like that. And it'll keep it symmetrical. You could toggle on the grid, and the grid, it just visualizes the grid. And that's based on the tile size. So if I want a bigger grid, maybe 32 by 32, I could change that. Go back into painting, and now see the grid is slightly larger. You could show the UVs or hide the UVs of selected tiles. I can choose the color down here and the color sliders RGB values or I could change it from RGB to HSL. You want to use it that I prefer using RGB. You could adjust these values or type them in. You click on, you double click the color to choose colors that way. There's also a secondary color that you could that you could use and. You can flip between them by pressing X. You can adjust the opacity and how the alpha, you can control how the alpha gets drawn. Whether it just overwrites it. So let's say we just overwrite it like that. Then let's say choose that. It just overwrites the alpha with the new alpha value but if we choose this other one it will like multiply it so then it, it reuses or not reuses it just kind of multiplies the alpha. Usually I don't use any transparency but it's up to you. So that's how you could uh, change colors. You could also add colors to your color palette by right clicking and choosing add color. It adds your new color to the palette. You can remove the color by selecting it and right click and remove. You can save the palette, load palettes, empty it, and remove duplicates. Hide and show the palette if you want. 
If you use the eyedropper tool, you could eyedrop the colors that are in the towel set, like that. Or when you're drawing, you could hold Alt to eyedrop as like a shortcut. So you don't have to flip between the tools. You can um, you can use the eraser tool to erase. You can press E to choose the eraser tool, B to choose pencil. Each one has a shortcut key. There is the paint bucket tool, allows you to fill in an area with a given color. And when you select it up here, you can choose contiguous and turn it on or off. And that will determine whether it colors one area or whether it colors the entire. Um, whether it colors outside that area, but same pixels of that color, basically. <laughs> As you can see, it has a different effect depending on whether it's on or off. Also checkered. Let's say it's like that. You can get a checkered fill by toggling that. Then there's the selection tool allows you to select an area you can draw within that selection or you can um, you could cut it out the selection out and resize it. Oops. To resize it, hold shift to keep it proportional. You can hold control to snap it to the grid. Control and shift, alt from the center. There's also um, you can rotate it 90 degrees, flip it, mirror it. So let's say we cut that, flip it, mirror it, rotate it. We can copy it, we can paste it. So Paste it multiple times like that. We can control X to cut it, paste it again. We could uh, hold control Alt to kind of clip it without cutting it. There's all sorts of <laughs> shortcut keys that you could use and, and you could read about them in the documentation. There's the lasso. So if you don't want it square, you can do like a custom shape. That. You can also cut from it. Resize it. You can use the magic wand to select areas and cut areas out. You can hit the, de the delete key to delete selections that you've cut out. You can use the hand hand tool to hand the scene or use spacebar key. Arrow key arrow key to move selections. So if I select uh 
this and then use the arrow key so you don't have to use the keyboard press the X uh, so those are some ways to use the painting tools to draw on your tiles